Hello everybody, Brian Tulsa here. This is the answers video for the Ask Me Anything. We made it to vlog number 50, uh, halfway to 100, and that went amazingly fast. Um, some videos have had a bit more effort than other others, but this daily uh, conversation I have enjoyed very much, and I feel it's been good for me. It's given me an opportunity to kind of uh, sort out my thoughts about things, uh, to talk things through, but also it's been a motivation to go places, to see things, and I'd like to keep that up. And I really appreciate those who are uh, watching and who have stuck with me and uh, continue to um, comment. So thank you for that. Um, on the video yesterday, um, I had 14 comments, so I guess that's like 14 questions. So I'm just going to go through these, um, starting with the oldest first, and uh, I will just answer your questions. Uh, the first one is Tom Servo. He says, ever think of practicing law in another state? If so, which states would you go to and which would you never consider? Um, good question. Uh, I have... Um, and if I were to practice law in another state, I'd probably go someplace that I just want to live. Um, like, uh, I visited Colorado a couple of times, and I just think it's a really pretty state. Um, it seems like a, a nice place to live. Um, so, Colorado, I would consider that. Um, Texas, because, um, well, it's nearby, so I wouldn't have to move very far from friends and family, um, and the, there are more opportunities there. <clears throat> and I've always had an affinity for New England. Um, as for where I would not consider, um, although I like visiting California, uh, I, I, I just can't see myself living there. Um, not, not that there's anything wrong with California, it's just, I, I just don't see myself, um, uh, living there. Uh, nice place to visit, though. Beautiful state. Many great things there. Um, Illinois. I've been to Illinois a few times. Again, nothing against Illinois, but I just don't see <clears throat> myself settling in someplace like Chicago or Springfield. Um, so, yeah, I have considered it is the answer. Uh, and that's kind of an idea. I, I, I would think about where I would want to live, other than Oklahoma. <clears throat> it's hard to do, though, because I've got a lot of ties to Oklahoma. And Oklahoma frustrates me. Uh, there are some good things about Oklahoma, but <clears throat> Oklahoma is a, can be a very frustrating place to live. Um, I won't go into that, but I have a lot of ties here, so... I'm not likely to leave uh, in the near future. Uh, thanks for your question. The next question is the Killer Weezer, who says, Have you ever met anyone that follows both your, both your channels outside of business or G.I. Joe conventions? If so, how was uh, the interact or interaction, I, you mean? I have, I mean, okay. I've only recently started uh, getting this channel back up and going. So, uh, I know some people from the other channel have kind of followed me over here. So, um, I probably haven't met, like, individuals who follow both. However, I have met people uh, who follow, you know, one channel or the other uh, outside of conventions and stuff. And the interactions have really all been pretty good. Um, when I was running this channel as my main channel many years ago. Um, it was never a very big channel, but I ran into a couple people locally that that watched the channel, that watched the show. And um, that was surprising. There was one time uh, when the family was in Grove, Oklahoma, which is not a big town, but my parents have a, a a place out there, um, and we were strolling through Lindenwood Garden, which just, we brought the kids to, you know, experience some nature and flowers and stuff, and then one of the guys, I think he was like a, a groundskeeper there, uh, an employee, 
uh, just kind of walked by and said, hey, you know, you're Brian Tulsa, watch your videos, I think they're great. And that was, I mean, it was cool, but uh, surprising, unexpected. Uh, so yes, I, I have had that happen, and as far as the uh, other channel goes, um, that has happened a few times. Um, uh, one time when I was, um, you know, doing some antique shopping, uh, ran into someone. Uh, another time uh, when I was, uh, you know, looking for toys, um, toy hunting, uh, somebody spotted me and said that they appreciated my video for assembling the USS flag. So that was really cool. Uh, but yeah, those interactions really have been very positive. Um, and that it has happened a few times. So yeah, it's been cool. Next question, Cameron Johnson. Uh, did you keep most of your toys from childhood or have you ended up having to rebuy them? And how do you feel about the current state of the G.I. Joe hobby regarding prices for figures uh, compared to past years? Um, I uh, have very few of my childhood toys. In fact, the only... Um, the only ones that I have left, uh, were in a toolbox, and it was mainly, like, parts, like, figure parts, and a few accessories, and I did a video opening the toolbox, kind of, you know, uh, Geraldo Rivera style, and, uh, kind of looking at what was left of my childhood toy collection, but, uh, very few. And so, yeah, I've had to go back and rebuy them. And prices, to finish answering your question, prices have gone kind of crazy. I think that uh, that was partially due to um, the next the Netflix uh, show, The Toys That Made Us. Um, they did a G.I. Joe episode, and I think that got a lot of people kind of nostalgic for G.I. Joe. And so you started to see people kind of come in and start buying things, and that kind of inflated prices a bit. Um, the inflation, to me, sort of corresponded with around that time period. N now, though, it's just going to get uh, more expensive, at least for the time being, um, because uh, there's new stuff out now. And you might think that having new product will draw people away from the vintage product. I'm not sure that that's necessarily the case. I think um, sometimes that inspires people to buy more of the vintage toys. Uh, another thing is there's a movie uh, that's supposed to come out later this year, and um, that will get people looking at the old toys. So um, it, at least in the short term, is probably going to get more expensive. So um, I'm trying to catch bargains when I can, uh, but it's it's uh, it's not easy. Um, fortunately, the collection is getting closer to being done, but I'm trying to grab some of the rare sets and figures before they get so ridiculously expensive that they're totally out of uh, range. Um, there's still some common things that I need to pick up, but those will be around. They're, they're common. They're easy to find. Um, and even if the prices get a bit inflated on those, you know, it'd still be reasonable. Uh, but, uh, yeah, that's kind of my thoughts about it. It's, it's expensive. Uh, and I think it's going to get more expensive at least for a while. I think at some point, uh, some of those, uh, collectors those kind of new collectors will move on. They'll get interested in something else and start to sell off some of those. And so I think we'll eventually see that the prices come down a little bit, but not in the short term. Um, thank you for the question. Uh, Erdio21 says, if it's not too personal, uh, or if it's too personal, I understand, was the Joe slash reviewing an issue with the marriage? Uh, no, not really. Uh, in fact, not at all. Um, in fact, that kind of gave us something that we could do together, um, and that's, I think that actually helped. Um, so, yeah, that was not, not a problem. Uh, Erdio has one more, uh, random, Iron Maiden or Metallica? Interesting question. Um, <clears throat> I, 
I have listened to metal, and sometimes I listen to metal. I would not consider myself to be a big metal fan, but, um, I mean, it's not a super easy choice. I mean, I guess I say Metallica, but even saying Metallica, then I'm not sure that that's the right answer. I, I know that's, um, I'm kind of weaseling out of your question, so sorry about that, but, um, I don't know if I can accurately answer, um... So that, I think that's the best I can do. Um, okay. Uh, Daruti says, um, why didn't it work out between you and your wife? You seem like such a good couple. Uh, the last time you did the live stream together, what happened? Um, that's fair. And I don't want to go into too much detail because it does involve the private life of somebody else who's not here. Um, but just if I can be as general as possible... Um, things had been going pretty well. Uh, we had had some rough patches in our relationship uh, several times over the last um, like 18 years. Um, we had been able to work through a lot of those things, but there were certain unresolved issues that uh, we that that had kind of been swept under the rug, and uh, they just couldn't be ignored anymore. And we did try to work through those things, but uh, we were not successful. I can't, I don't, I don't feel like I can go into any more detail than that without divulging private information of somebody who's not here. Um, so I think that's the best I can do. So I'm sorry about that. But um, there were a lot of things that were good. And, you know, that, that wasn't fake you know, when we were interacting and getting along well, and um, that that was all real. We weren't uh, hiding, you know, some kind of, um, you know, it, it, when the cameras went off, we weren't fighting each other. It wasn't like that. Um, but yeah, we had some things that needed to be dealt with, and they were going to have to be dealt with sooner or later, and uh, turns out it, it's sooner. So that's the best I can do right now. Um, Cobra Island says, what kind of music do you listen to, uh, on your leisure time? I figure, um, I ask a question not based on the other channel. <laughs> um, uh, I don't listen to a lot of music right now, uh, mainly because I'm recording videos a lot, and so, you know, I don't usually have, I, I can't usually have stuff playing in the background when I'm recording, uh, but, um, I, if I listen to music, it's usually, like, 80s pop. Um, I also have an affinity for like um, 70s British pop music, uh, like like Bowie, um, and, and some American stuff from that same time period, like uh, like I Iggy Pop and um, uh, New York Dolls, um, Velvet Underground, that kind of thing. Uh, Lou Reed, you know. So uh, I like that stuff, uh, but I find myself just not having time to listen to as much music as I used to, uh, just because, um, you know, I can't really listen to music and, like, record a video like this at the same time. Uh, but, yeah, that's the kind of stuff that I like. Um, Andrew, Andrew, uh, the guy's so nice, uh, that, uh, they named him twice. It says, found my login. Congratulations. Thanks for the videos on both channels. Uh, not, uh, commented as usual, as usually never log in. Okay, so but you found your login. Very good. Um, prefer to social media on Twitter. Yes, I, I did see your uh, comments on Twitter, so thank you for that. Open-ended question to the extent you feel like discussing your transition growing up with a religion-based uh, view of the world and one to critical thinking. Uh, what were the key moments, ideas, timeline, people, suggestions? That's, that's a lot. Um, and as this is possibly too much, uh, you may want to use it, um, and you may want to use it, uh, these matters uh, are sources of separate videos. Actually, that might be a good idea to do kind of separate videos about that. I offer an alternative. The news source, what news sources do you consult regularly to stay informed? Okay, so I, I have alternative questions here. Um, I'll try to break down the bigger question into maybe the shortest possible answer. 
I had gotten, I, I'd kind of just gotten away from church as an adult um, because I, I didn't like it. I was, I had grown up with it. I had seen so many churches and so many different types of churches, uh, heard so many different preachers. I had listened and listened and listened. Um, and it was not something that, as an adult, I wanted to voluntarily do myself. I didn't want to go, so I didn't. And I just kind of lived my life, you know. But um, in my, I guess it's like mid-20s, uh, I started to pick up some books, some books on history. And I started to read, and, and they're not like religious-based books, they're just uh, pretty much straight history books about World War II and European history and, and so on. And it reading something that describes the world not in religious terms was, was new. It was fresh. It was enlightening. It just, they, they weren't trying to um, place history in a timeline of, you know, the book of Rev Revelations. Uh, they, they, they weren't trying to explain events in history as um, the results of supernatural intervention. Um, they were describing um, human actions, human motivations. They were describing the people and the personalities involved that, that made decisions that changed the world. And I just started reading more and more and more and more. I, 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 I just sort of blazed a trail through uh, history, and from history, I, I needed, there were references that um, I felt I needed to read to, under, to understand better what I was already reading. So uh, I read some philosophy because there were references to certain philosophers and philo philosophical works in the history that I was reading. So then I started reading those. And from there, it just sort of expanded. And I was sort of, I'm kind of educating myself um, on history, on, on philosophy, on law, on politics. And um, it was fun and it was interesting, but uh, that's a very inefficient way to learn uh, because you, you don't have any guidance, you don't have any direction. And so you learn a lot, but you have gaps in your knowledge because. You know, you're just going, just following this winding path through, you know, whatever books you can find to read. Uh, so that's when I decided to go back to school. Um, now, that was just, that inspired me to uh, finish my education. But it was around that time that I first started to revisit um, religion after really just not thinking about it for a long time. I didn't have a position about it, about whether it was true or not, or whether I believed or not. I just really didn't think about it at all. Um, but I started to look at it again, but then I, I was looking at it with, with different eyes. I was looking at it with eyes that understood the world a lot better. Um, and after reading... Uh, some works of philosophy and, and applying uh, the techniques of reason to those beliefs, I, I found myself not agreeing with a lot of them. And I did find, like, eventually I latched on to uh, some of the atheist writers that were cropping up in, like, the early 2000s, um, so your Dawkins and Hitchens and uh, Dennett and, and so on. But, you know, I had pretty much already transitioned away from religion by then. Um, and and some of the works of those authors I I didn't completely agree with because, again, I was applying um, the methods of critical thinking that I had picked up 
to them, and while I agreed with some of what they were talking about, I, some of their arguments didn't s seem as strong. But I still came down on the side of, like, I, I can't force myself to believe something that I don't think is true. And I've been open to... Um, to being convinced, you know, I've, I spent a lot of years, um, looking at evidence that was presented, fairly looking at evidence presented, not, not with the mind of, uh, finding a reason to reject it, but, you know, I, I, I honestly had an open mind about it, and I, I reached a point a few years ago where I was like, I've, Unless somebody comes up with something new, I, I think, for me, this subject is uh, is kind of a done deal. I, I'm going to let that one rest, because I think I've pretty much made up my mind about it. Um, I've not been presented with anything more compelling than the many, many other things that I've, I've read. And to answer the alternative question, what... Uh, news sources do uh, I consult regularly regularly to stay informed. Um, uh, several local sources, but I don't focus on uh, kind of a, a limited number of sources. There are a few sources that I find untrustworthy, so I don't consult them. So your Fox News and your uh, uh, Breitbart, uh, I'm not... This is, that's there's no point in reading those. They're, they're not helpful. Um, but uh, I, I do try to trust sources. Trust is maybe not the right word. Um, I, I do try to uh, read sources that have an editorial staff behind them, uh, so not somebody's blog. Um, so, you know, something like uh, uh, New York Times or... Um, uh, Bloomberg or um, oh, Yahoo, I don't know, something where there's an editorial staff. Now, I, I read those news sources, but I, I apply critical thinking to all of those. I'm using these sources of information, but I'm also considering how reliable their sources are. Um, so uh, I'm not just consuming, you know, the news media. Uh, I, I'm kind of approaching that with a critical eye as well. Approaching the news with a critical eye does not m mean uh, applying conspiracy theory logic to it. Okay, so, yeah, I'll just leave that there. Thanks. <laughs> um, hey, it's David Landon Cole. Hello, Landon. It says, how do you think Don Donald Trump might win the election? Uh, I think his best chance to win is with um, voter suppression, which is in full swing. Um, he, you got to remember the electoral college in the American system. It, it it doesn't necessarily matter, you know, what his overall numbers are in the nation. What matters is how many electors does he collect based on the states that he wins, and. There are a few really close states where if it's swung one way or another, it can change the course of the whole election. Um, and voter suppression in a few places could make the difference. Now, I I'm feeling better about 2020. I'm feeling a little more optimistic. I was not optimistic for um, a long time. Uh, really, basically since 2016, I've been a bit pessimistic about um, the ability of his opponents to, to beat him. But I'm feeling better about that now. Uh, but if he is to win, um, he's going to have to find a way to pick up some electors in some of these close states where um, if, if the election is fair he might not win. So look for um, excuses being made uh, to close polls, uh, to, to not allow voting by mail so that um, people with medical conditions and who are concerned about 
the coronavirus, it, it's too risky for them to go and be exposed to the virus. Uh, look for these techniques of keeping people away from the polls, especially in certain areas, as when uh, when they decide that they can't o open as many polling places, the ones that they close will are, are almost always in areas that would naturally tend to vote for his opponent. So to answer your question, uh, voter suppression, I think, is how he would win if he if he could win. Uh, Michael Johnson, hello, Michael, says, Who or what is your favorite fictional representation in the legal profession? Mine is Atticus Finch in To Kill a Mockingbird. Atticus Finch, very good. Uh, that's also high on my list. Um, what I most think of is uh, James Stewart's character in the movie Anatomy of a Murder. And I feel bad because I can't remember the character's name. But uh, Jimmy Stewart is always Jimmy Stewart. But he, I, I just really liked how uh, that character managed that case, that, that murder case. Um, it, it was, I, I liked that. And it, it felt, you know, in the trials that I've been in, it felt uh, more or less authentic. So yeah, that, I think I'm gonna, th I'm gonna go with the uh, James Stewart Anatomy of a Murder. Uh, that's a really good movie. I've seen it several times. Uh, okay, Time Lord Larry, 1962 says someone already asked uh, what I was going to ask, uh, but I'll say it anyway. What's your favorite type of music and favorite band or musician? Uh, yeah, I'm just I'm just listening to whatever uh, 80s stuff is on the radio right now. Um, so, yeah, the same answer. Um, I hope someday to uh, <laughs> to have more time to listen to music. Um, sometimes when I have downtime, like when I actually have quiet time, um, you know, I'll be chilling out. I'll be like, okay, maybe I can listen to some music. But then, like, one of my favorite YouTubers will put up a video, and I want to watch that. So, you know, that's my life, but it's okay uh, not a bad life. I'm I'm pretty darn happy actually. So uh, I just <laughs> haven't had time for a lot of music. Uh, Destructar says, uh, "Were you ever into video games? And if so, uh, what's your favorite? I like Mega Man. I, I was when I was much younger, and I've played a few games as an adult. The dog is growling at me. You have to wait. Um, I've played a few games as an adult." Um, but uh, I, I just don't have time for games right now. For the same time, I don't. For the same reason, I don't have a lot of time for music. Um, but you know, like for, as far as modern games, I, I've played uh, Minecraft and um, Minecraft. I, I, not much else. Um, and when we had a Nintendo sixty four, um, uh, I remember playing uh, Zelda: Ocarina of Time, which I enjoyed a lot. Um, on my kids' um, Nintendo Switch, uh, I played the Zelda game on that. I can't remember the name of it. Uh, but going back before then, you know, we had a Nintendo Entertainment System. Oh, wait, not going back quite that far. Um, as a young adult, I had a Sega Genesis, and I really enjoyed the Mortal Kombat games on that. Played the heck out of those Mortal Kombat games. Um, and uh, I also had the uh, Nintendo Game Gear, and same thing, lots of Mortal Kombat, uh, and a few others, and uh, Sonic the Hedgehog. Uh, but before that, you know, we, we had a Nintendo Entertainment System. We had a few games for that. That was back when you could rent games, so we rented games sometimes, um, uh, and I... Um, and I, and I, I like the Mario games, um, the Mario Brothers games on that. Before that, we had an Atari 2600, and um, we played a lot of Pac-Man. Uh, we had, um, I, I had the G.I. Joe game. In fact, I have it now. I have a Nintendo, uh, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, Atari 2600 now, and I have a few games for it. And we had played like Video Olympics and stuff on that, which 
the kind of things that you did in the early 80s. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I just don't, I don't play a lot of games now. But, um, uh, but um, I, I would not consider myself to be a gamer. Uh, but, you know, it, you know, I've played. So, yeah, that's, that's my answer. And finally, last question. Uh, Ruby Bandit says, Hey, Brian, longtime fan and subscriber of both channels and patron. Uh, patron. Thank you very much. Uh, how easy or hard is it to juggle both channels? Uh, he's got a, another question after that. It's not as hard as I thought it would be because usually these videos for this channel are just really quick and easy. Uh, just a little bit of editing and a lot of that I can do on my phone. Uh, so that's that makes it easier. Uh, and the other channel has a pretty regimented um, uh, routine and schedule. So as long as I'm sticking with that... Uh, then it gives me a minute to, to do something like this. Or to take a road trip on one of my off days with the, the other channel. And, you know, when I get back, I just fiddle on my phone a little bit and get it edited and upload it from my phone. So it's, it's not been that bad. Uh, plus, sometimes I just need to talk about something other than, uh, than the topic of my other channel. I love the other channel. I'm loving the stuff that I'm doing. I'm, I'm really enjoying the creative process right now. Uh, but, um, but sometimes I just need something else. And it's been kind of therapeutic for me. So this has been good. It's, it's not been that hard. The only time it's hard is like on some days when it gets kind of late and I'm really trying to stick with a daily vlog because I like the, the discipline of kind of making myself set aside time to express myself about something and to speak my mind about something. Uh, but on some days, it, I kind of let that get away from me and I have to, like, jump on it really quick, uh, kind of at the end of the evening. But um, for the most part, it's not, um, it's not, been, uh, not been too bad. Uh, unrelated question. If uh, you could have an album or band do... Uh, your soundtrack to your life. Who or what album would it be? Mine is a tie between Weezer's Blue Album and um, Beatles' Rubber Soul. Oh, man, that's a good question. Oh, I've never thought about that, actually. But, um... Uh, you know, probably I would I would probably want the soundtrack to be a bit more grandiose than my actual life. So it'd probably be like um, uh, Ziggy Stardust or something like that. Um, uh, so, yeah, something along those lines. Or, you know, I mentioned the New York Dolls a while, a, while, a little earlier. And yeah, I could, I could kind of see a, a few moments of life set to... Uh, the New York Dolls, um, or or like maybe maybe you throw in like the B fifty twos, especially like the the really upbeat stuff. So like even when life is super dull, you, you just put on one an upbeat song, and it it automatically makes it seem more interesting. Uh, anyway, I hope those answers were good. Uh, this video is going to be really long. Sorry about that, but uh, but thanks. It was been it was really nice to hear from everyone. Um, I'll be back tomorrow with something shorter. For now, though, I'm going to take this dog out for walkies. You want to go for a walk? You want to go for? Walk? She just she just said yes. She just said yes. She does. Okay, thanks everyone. Um, I will um, talk to you tomorrow.